Hey guys, today we are going to talk about getting a smooth gait from a pacey horse. Now, there seems to be some confusion. Many people think that they missed this video. Um, if you look at what time, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So all those people that thought they missed it, this is how to break up the pace and get a smooth gait. So uh, don't worry, you haven't missed it. We are still going to talk about the day that day and this video will be available. So here's the thing. I am not, I don't have videos to show. Hey Maggie, thanks for joining us. I, um, I don't have videos to show you for this. Uh, I am, the things I'm going to be talking about will be included in my new DVD, which will hopefully come out next month, but I'm going to walk you through them. Um, and uh, I'll have a couple links that I'll put in the description for videos that I'm referencing. And this is basically, this won't necessarily help if you have a trotty horse. Um, that will be a separate video. And I know some people have asked for that. We will still cover that, but that's not this video. This is really talking about questions on how to uh, really break up the pace for pacey horses. Because that's what's most common. Yes, there's plenty of trotty horses out there. And we will talk about that. Um, okay. Here is the very first thing. This is, again, my name is Ivy Sheck Snyder. I'm a gated horse trainer from Northern Illinois, though, again, I train Liberty, trick training, bridalist, dressage. My main focus is gated horses, getting a relaxed gait on a loose rein, and I don't show at all, so uh, my focus is getting a smooth gait and not necessarily a show gait. So the very first thing, no matter what breed of horse you have, because these apply to all breeds of gated horses, the very first thing that I do to get rid of uh, the pace, and again, hopefully it's enough time for people to have joined, the first thing I do to get rid of the pace is to train head down. Now, many of you are familiar with this because I have talked about this over and over again, but here's the thing, and I need everybody to hear this. Head down is not just head down at the walk, but you must get head down when you go faster. So if your horse is pacing, normal, you must, you must get head down when the horse paces. And this is the only time, once I start working on a gated horse to gate, this is the only time that I let a pacey horse just pace when I'm working on the head down. It only takes a few sessions for them to start getting it. Yes, it's normal for your horse to put their head down and then put it right back up. That's because they don't have the muscle memory or the muscle strength to put their head down. Now, why do we ask for them to put their head down? Great question. I'm so glad you asked. The reason you do this is because when their head is down, they're lifting their back. And when they lift their back, it means they're lifting their withers, they're using their hind end more. Uh, and it also gets relaxation. <laughs> um, hey, Sylvia. Hey, Regina. Thanks for joining me. When you get their head down, you start getting them to move differently. <laughs> some horses, like at some clinics, all we need to do is get their head down and they stop pacing. Okay? Which is awesome. But... I know there's plenty of horses that when they put their head down, they still pace. Okay, we'll cover, we're going to go to that in a minute. But let's say the horse puts their head down. You finally started training it. You've got some progress. They put their head down and you've got a couple steps of gait. Now, many of you are going to know this from my videos. You've got a few steps of gait. Um, what do you do now to make sure that you get more steps of gait? So you've, you're riding your horse, you've got the head down, whether you're in the pasture, you're on the road, you get a few steps of gait. What is the most important thing? And this here is going to be the most important thing after head down for you to learn. Because if you're going to follow these other steps, I'm going to tell you, hey, Treva, uh, if you're going to follow these other steps, then this is the most important thing during training anything with a horse. So you want to get stop, you want to get a horse that gates smoothly, what you do when they gate a few steps, is you must stop and praise. And this is true at any point in the training. Any point in the training. If they gate a few steps, you stop and praise. Don't ask for 10 steps. Don't ask for 20. Don't ask for a quarter mile. <clears throat> Fran says her mare paces and her head is down like a quarter horse. Yes, that happens. I have worked with those. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about that. If they gate a few steps or they trot, let's say they have a pacey horse and they start to trot. Now, there are exceptions to this rule. Um, uh, my friend Sherry, 
Um, she has a, a tricky horse. Um, we got a couple steps of gait at a clinic, but he's very difficult because he trots and paces and very seldom wants to get into a gait. But that horse is the exception. And again, I hope to get with her and do some more training. She's in Maryland, which is not close to Illinois. So it's taking some time to get there. Um, but we will, we'll make it work. Um, so it, when you have a horse that, uh, paces, and you get a few steps of gait or you get a few steps of trot, you must stop and praise. Okay. So that's, that is the thing. That is the number one thing that is going to help you get a consistent gait. I have, I train 80 to a hundred gated horses a year. If you help them learn what you want them to do, they will do it more. And that's the big thing is gated horses. Hey, Lori, glad you, uh, Oh, work on lay down. Awesome. Glad you joined us. So the thing is, here's a really quick aside. Hey, Linda, and this is gonna be a longer video. Uh, Debbie asked about one in the trot. So if, if <laughs> let me go back, I'll come back to this. Okay, so if you have a pacey horse, and so many people ask, these gated horses are bred to gate. Why don't they gate? Part of it is it could be training, bad breeding, confirmation, injury, bad riding, Many, many things could be the reason they're not gating. So we have to help the horse understand we want them to gate. How do we do that? Okay. The way I do it is that when the horse gates, he one, gets a loose rein and two, early on, I stop and praise. Now, I don't want to stop every 10 feet. Of course I don't. I want him to gate for two miles without me having to do anything. But at the beginning, if you will stop and praise for three steps of gate or 10 steps of gate, they will learn mentally and physically what you want them to do. Okay, that is the most important thing. No matter what techniques you use, if you want a consistent gate, do that. All right, so I'm going to answer a couple questions and then we're going to move on to, so what if the horse's head is down and they're still pacing? Okay, um, Debbie says, I want the trot. So over here, we have a horse that trots and over here, we have a horse that paces and right in the middle of those, we have a smooth gait and that's what we want, a smooth gait. So if you have a pacey horse, which way do we need to go to get them to gait? That's right, move toward the trot. The trot is a better gait for the horse to do than the pace. Do we want them to trot all the time? Absolutely not. I want a smooth gait. Trust me, I'm a gait Nazi. I want a smooth gait. So that's why I mentioned the trot. Next thing, okay, I've never seen a horse hard trot, only pace. Um, yes, a pacey horse can trot. I've trot many, many of them to trot. And it's not necessarily, it's not that I want them to trot. It's that I want them to gate and I need them. They must get away from the pace. The pace is bad. It's bad for them. It's a stiff gait. They are not, they, it just moves badly and they're not going to gate. They just can get locked into that. So my goal is to push them toward the gate. If they trot, wonderful. If they gate, stop and praise. That's better than just pacing, especially for those that are really pacey. Now, some of your horses are going to put their head down and they're going to gate a little bit and you're going to nail it. Some of them are going to be much harder. Okay. So what do you do? Here it is guys here. What do you do when you have a horse that's really pacey? Um, Linda says or she's there, but the internet is awful. Don't worry. This video will be available for you to watch later. Okay. So your horse has the head down. You've got it. Good job. He's still pacing. What do you do? And again, this will be a video that I'll include in the comments. What you're going to do is you're going to use a couple of ground poles or cavaletti is my preference or wooden fence posts. You want something that's eight to 12 inches off the ground and hard, solid. My early videos showed me using PVC pipe or like smaller fence posts that are maybe this far around. That's not tall enough and it's not enough to break up the pace. <laughs> All right. Um, so you put those on the ground. I usually start with one or two poles and I put them 10 to 12 feet apart. Early videos showed three to four feet apart. I don't do that anymore. I found more beneficial and more impulsion setting them farther apart. Um, and I'll show you a video of what I have. Um, and then you can either make that or buy that or use some logs or some fence posts, anything. You can set up multiple ones. And this is where a lot of people make some mistakes. So try to pay attention. I'm going to go through the steps with you, but it's important that you understand. And if you have questions, please ask for clarification. <clears throat> so first thing, you have to have trained head down at the walk and the pace. If you're one of the people that says my horse, when he has more impulsion, sorry, guys, I had an emergency alert there. Okay. So if you're one of the people that whose horse puts their head up when they, when they go faster, you need to train that head down before you go to this next step. Okay. So 
you set your poles out, you've got two of them out there about 10, 12 feet apart. Just try something. You can always change it later. You walk your horse is nice and calm. You walk up to the poles. When you're about six feet in front of the poles, before you get to them, go forward now. Don't wait. Don't slowly speed up. Go forward. Just go. Don't pull on the reins. Let the horse go. And if he goes, you can praise him. But the goal is to get him to trot or to um, step. Basically, because he has to lift his feet up, he's not able to pace. If you watch the video of the horse pacing, most of the time the horse's legs stay very close to the ground. So to pace over the poles, they have to lift him up, which changes the timing and means that the horses are now able to do something other than the pace, which is hopefully a gait, maybe the trot. If they gate, um, stop and praise. Absolutely right there. Stop and praise. You've made progress. Do it a few times. Now, let's say they don't. Let's say they knock it over. They don't go faster. Slow down to a walk. Turn around right away. And I mean right away. And go over the poles again. Okay? And um, I'll share a link to uh, a video. And I'm basically going to give you the idea of it. Um, but the poles are too close together. So remember, 10 to 12 feet apart. Um, older videos showed them closer together. Okay, so what this is going to do is going to break up the pace. Okay, now it's not going to fix the gate totally, but it's going to take those horses that are really pacey and it's going to show them something different, a different way to move their feet. Okay, all right. So that's what we need is a different way for them to move their feet. If they start moving differently, stop and praise. Here's another tip. Remember, keep these sessions sessions short, 20 to 30 minutes, no more than that. All right, because you can get the horse upset. Okay, so what if you've done this for a few days? Now, oh, I forgot to tell you, ground poles. You shouldn't need to do this more than two weeks. Two weeks is extreme. Two weeks is for the horse that's older and has always been ridden with the head way up, okay? For most horses, this is going to be something you're going to use three to five days. Now, it doesn't have to be all in one week or in a row, but something that um, is a little bit longer. Uh, Sylvia said, how big are the poles? Well, I like my Cavalettis. So ideally, if you're going to use a fence post, it's got to be 10 to 12 inches, eight inches, or Cavaletti. I will show you. The reason you'd use a higher Cavaletti is if your horse is taller and they need to pick their feet up more. Some horses just need something little and some horses need something bigger. And that's going to be uh, varied based on the horses. I want to go answer a couple questions and then we're going to move on. So what's what if you're doing the poles and you're getting a couple steps of gait um, and then you, uh, you get a couple steps of gait? Where do you go from there to get a consistent gait? That's what we're going to talk about next, but I'm going to answer a couple questions. Uh, so we answered that yes, a horse can trot, even if they've only paced. Um, isn't a horse that is more trotty, uh, if on the trotty side, easier to teach to canter? Susan asks. Yes, they are. Generally speaking, if I have a horse that does a pacey canter, if you want it better, I encourage you to train the trot. Um, I've only seen my horse trot if he is upset, loose in the arena or field. He only paces and still paces over fences. Okay, so Linnea, or I'm not sure how you say your name. That's how I've seen it said. Um, he paces and still paces over fences. Okay, then it's not tall enough. That's actually the thing I learned a couple of years ago is I was having horses that were pacing over the four, four inch poles or six inch. You put that at 12 feet and something they can't knock over, they will pick their feet up and they will trot. So try that. Um, and oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, if your horse tries to jump the fences, like or your poles, stop them. I just kind of check them and I don't let them jump. And if they go over it nicely, like they don't jump, they go over it like they need to, I stop and praise. Very important. Whenever they make any progress, stop and praise. Lori says, I have two Pasifinos. One came out of her pace with work. Starting the other, she trots. She does not, have, she does, not she does head down well, which is normal for a trotty horse. Um, will gait smoother when their head is up? Okay. Can I explain why this is the case? I will briefly explain. As the horse puts their head down, they lift their back, which encourages a more square gait, which will often lead to the trot. Not always, but in many cases it will. Which is why, once you've done head down with a trotty horse, I will sometimes do head up, which we're going to cover in another video. We're not talking about trotty horses necessarily today, but it is normal for that. What you described, Lori, very normal. Um, I talked about how big the poles should be. Uh, Janet says, I wish you were in my state. Sorry, but I do clinics. Well, when there's not a coronavirus, I do clinics. Um, doesn't mean that the horse lacks, uh, so Alexandra says, doesn't mean that a horse lacks strength, muscles. If it can get easily on hard ground like the tarmac, but prefers a hard trot or pace on soft ground like riding area. Sorry, not a native English speaker. No worries. You did a good job. Okay, so 
Yes, if they will gait where it's smooth, but then not where it's a rougher terrain, that is a muscle issue. Uh, they just need to get stronger at holding that. And then when they do gait in those areas where it's a little bit harder for them to gait, you need to stop and praise and not expect them to gait as long. You need to remember that when we do things that are difficult because something changes, um, there's more distractions. Or if we're exercising, we add more weight. We can't do as many reps. If you make it hard <clears throat> for the horse to gait <clears throat> and then expect him to gait as well or as long, that's not fair. Uh, paces over 15 to 19 inches. Linnea, I would love to see a video of that. That would be a great example to show people. Or he jumps. Well, I wouldn't let him jump. Um, and um, does, if he has his head, I can't. Wow. Okay. I want to believe you. I'm naturally skeptical. So it has nothing to do with you. I would love to see a video where he, he paces over that high. Um, that'd be awesome to see because I've never seen it. So if you could send me a video, I would do my very best to help you figure out a way to get him to stop pacing. So please send me that video. Okay. So continuing on, I answered the questions we have here. Feel free to keep asking questions. Um, but what if you, so you've done the work, you've done head down, you've stopped and praised for a few steps of gait. Um, you're seeing some improvement. Um, the, the ground poles are giving you a few steps of gait. Where do you go from here? Well, one thing you can do is you can lower your poles, okay? You can, instead of having a 10 inches, if he's starting to do well or starting to trot all the time, put them at on ground level or four inches. Can you still get a little bit of gait? Okay, that's progress. All right, but if I, the very next thing that I do, once I'm riding my horse and I'll get a few steps of gait, if I want to get more gait, like on a trail ride, you know, I ride on the road. That's what I have. I have a nice road. But I can't put ground poles out on the road, right? That cars come over. That just doesn't work. So what do I do? So here is what I the special footage, this new technique that I am using that once you can get a few steps of gait in the pasture, here is how to get a pacey horse to gait consistently by working on the road or on the trail. Okay. You've done head down. You've got a few steps of gait. You have your horse listening. Here's what you do next. So you get your horse out, you're riding on the road, and it should be where you can hear it so that you know what gait they're doing, excuse me, and you're listening for pucka, 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 of course. So you get your horse out, day one, you ask your horse to go forward into gait, you go, and you ask for the gait, and they start pacing. So first thing you do, ask for head down, keep going forward, don't slow down, go forward, ask for head down. If they start to gait, what do you do? Stop and praise immediately. And I often let my horses either eat grass or give them a handful of grain. You do not have to do this, but you can. It's an option. So stop and praise. They started gating. Okay. If they just paced, you ask for them to go forward. They put their head down and they just paced. That means you, um, you need to stop immediately, release the reins and back up five to six steps slowly. There's no rush head down and a slow backup is better. Back up five or six steps and then immediately go forward right away. Go get out of that backup. Go forward right away. What happens is that backup does two things. When a horse backs up, it's a diagonal gait. They're moving like they're trotting backwards, which is the opposite of the pace. And when they back up, they kind of, you know, they, they uh, use their hind end. They tuck their hind end underneath them. So when you go forward, they're already engaged and have impulsion. All right. So then they, um, then they really move forward. Now, sometimes they'll still just pace. So if you go forward and they pace, stop, back up, go forward again. If they gate, you must, of course, stop and praise immediately. You have to do that. That's, that's the big key. That's how the horse knows what to do next time by stopping and praising. Okay. That's the deal. And if anybody on here does clicker training, you're welcome to incorporate that with it. Totally up to you. Not, ma not mandatory or necessary, but you can. So you repeat this for three, you're probably going to repeat this for about seven days. Now, the first three or four days, it is going to seem like you are making zero progress. I promise you. Well, and you might have some horses that surprise you. Um, and if you have a day where the horse is all hyper and upset, don't do this. Don't make it worse, right? But if, um, if you do this for a few days, and, and you may have to stop and back up 10 or 15 times early on, like on the first day, before you get a couple steps of gait or trot and you stop and praise. But I promise the horse is going to start, he's going to start to get it. 
three or four, I did it, so I, in my DVD, I have the video where I'm riding, it's from the rider's point of view, I've got the GoPro on, and I honestly, as I'm giving you the running commentary, on day three or four, I thought I wasn't making any progress getting the gate, and then I went back and looked at it, and I was like, I was made so much progress, it's just so hard to see, because we want perfect, we want the horse to gate for 200 feet, which is why nobody ever stops and praises for 10 feet, but if you stop and praise for 10 feet, you will get 200 and you will get two miles. I don't know how to explain this any better. If you will stop and praise for a few steps of gait, you will get so much more. It just, it is so hard for us to stop when we're getting what we want. All right. But I promise it works. It works on so many horses. Um, and you basically just repeat that. Now, the next question people ask is, how do I know when to ask for more? Your horse will show you. If he can hold it for 20 steps, he will. If he can't, he's going to break and you should have stopped him sooner. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do I address pacing on the lunge line? Use ground poles and head down. Um, ground, uh, ground work is going to have to come on a little bit later of a video. But basically, if they're lunging, if you're lunging them and they're pacing, you can still put poles down and you want to work on head down and lateral work. Okay. Linda says, I've watched the head down video and working on that. Your cue for head down is just rein tightening and then loosening. Okay. Please watch the head down video multiple times. Okay. It is not just tightening and loosening. It is tightening. I hold pressure on the reins until the horse tucks his head, right? Breaking at the pole. Tucks his nose. And then I immediately release. Okay. Immediately release. Maggie, yes. About 10, 10 to 12 feet apart. You could try just one pole. You could try two. Yeah, just try. Experiment with it. Um, so, Linda, I hold light pressure on the reins, and as soon as they tuck their nose, I release the reins. That's my cue. And the release is when horses drop their head. It's not when you hold the reins tight. It's actually when you release. That's when the horses drop their heads. Okay? That's my cue for head down. Uh, okay. Um, so, that is how I take a pacey horse. Now, there's one more exercise. Um, that I'm going to talk to you about. And this is one of my favorite exercises that is the hardest for people to do. If you thought the rest of this was hard, this is harder. Hang on, guys. I'm talking way too much. And I was talking for like an hour and a half to my boyfriend before this call. So, um, <clears throat> this exercise, if you're a dressage rider or have a dressage or English background, will be easier. If you do working equitation with horses, this will be easier. One of the best exercises to help horses get stronger and help pacey horses to gait is to do lateral work. By lateral work, I specifically mean leg yield. So leg yield is kind of like side passing while going forward. So it's kind of a diagonal gait where the horse is going forward and going sideways. So, um, and it's going to be difficult for me to explain. There's probably a lot of videos on YouTube that show you how to do this. This is a video I will be working to create. Uh, one of the fun things I'm hoping to do in creating this video in the future when it dries up here in Illinois <clears throat> is to uh, do an aerial view so you can see what I'm doing and how the horse is moving sideways, um, looking down uh, so you can see the horse move. But leg yields, where the horse is going straight and sideways, really helps the horse lift their back. Now, the leg yield must be done with the head down to have benefits. If the head is up, you're getting very few um, gymnastic benefits from doing that. Um, so those are the exercises. Um, head down, ground pulls, stop and praise, stop and back up and go forward, and leg yields. Those are the ways to break up the pace. So I've got a few questions here. Um, okay. Laura says, help me know how to feel the gate quickly when he's going over the poles. Good question. So you know what the pace feels like, and you may have to spend some time thinking, uh, here's some, here's a way. If the horse's head is up, he's pacing. If he's down or gets really, like if you feel like you're being thrown out of the saddle, he's probably trotting. So that's a way to tell that. It should feel smooth. You have to learn to educate your butt. You need to learn to tell what the horse is doing when they're moving. It's not necessarily easy. I agree. It's hard. Gated horses are hard. I have videos that talk about this. Gated horses are not easy. If you want easy, go buy a quarter horse. And then don't worry about it. But if you want a gated horse, it's hard. You have to learn to just feel it. And again, remember what I said to do is have someone video you. If you're not 100% sure, you might be making progress and not even know it. Um, oh, good question. Uh, Kevin says uh, that 
I, well, you're talking about leg yield, right? Because I did it with your horse. Um, yeah. So I might be able to get some video of that and then post a little bit of that later. Um, because I was doing leg yield, um, with his horse. Kevin has an awesome horse. He done a ton of gymnastic. Like, doing lateral work is so good for you. And it's so good for the rider. It's very difficult if you've never done it before. But once you get it, it is so fun. All right. Um, Cassidy says, I joined late, but my Missouri Foxtrotter keeps her head down at all speeds, but never wants to keep her Foxtrot for long distance. Head down is great. Remember, how do we get long distance? And this is a good question. It's going to tie in. You should already know the answer. How do we get long distance from our horse? Well, we praise for short distance. Okay. Praise for short distance. Your horse has no idea that you want them to gate. And once they get tired, they just do what's easier for them because they don't know any differently. You have to help the horse understand what you want them to do. In this case, when you get 200 feet, stop and praise. 200 feet, stop and praise. 200 feet, stop and praise. Next day, 300 feet, stop and praise. My horses go from gating about three or four steps to gating a quarter of a mile to a half a mile in seven days, six or seven days, by stopping and praising. <clears throat> the video I have that's going to be on the DVD, I have two horses, one in six days, one in seven days, went from gating just a couple of steps, occasionally, usually pacing, to by the end of the video, gating about half a mile on a loose rein. Seven days. Not consecutive. Seven days to gating a quarter to a half a mile. The biggest thing, when you get a couple steps of gate, stop and praise. All right? <clears throat> uh, and again, you can go back and watch this video. This will be available for as long as you guys need. You can watch the video again. Um, again, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I want to help everybody get a good gate. So I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can. Last chance. Um, it's been about 30 minutes now, so we'll kind of wrap this up. If anybody has any last minute questions, go ahead and put those in and I will answer them. It is work. It is hard to tell. How do you know when the horse is gating? It's bumpy. What do I do? The best thing I can encourage you is go try these things. Just give it a chance. And then video it. See if you're making progress. See how it looks different from the week before. Because it's very easy to not see the progress. Um, so you have to have something to compare it to. Um, Maggie says, how long can you actually expect the horse to move and gate? Like a 10-mile ride. Should the goal be the horse can gate the whole time? <clears throat> For a 10-mile ride... Um, I mean, that would be, okay, so if your horse is gating along at about six or seven miles an hour, you'd be done in about an hour, or I mean, an hour and a half. I mean, maybe on a not hot day, they could gate that fat, gate that long with, if you worked up to it. Yeah, I think a horse could probably gate that long with prep, not, not just getting out of the pasture and doing it. Um, but that would be at a slow gate, uh, on level ground. A lot more to ask them to do like hills and stuff. <laughs> Laura, you're very welcome. Maggie, are there stretches that are helpful for the horses in pacing a long time to ease their transitions into gating? <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice. Um, head down is always good. Backing up is always good. Stretching. Um, I don't really do a lot of stretching stuff, so I am not qualified. Uh, the more you do head down, the better. <laughs> Sorry, my, my voice is just totally going. Uh, yeah, okay, so... If you like this video, if you got this far into the video, please share. Um, that helps so many people see this video and benefit from it. And it gets my name out there so more people can learn about head down and loose reins and all of this stuff. Secondly, if you want more videos like this, you can join my private training group. Most of you have already heard this. If you don't want to join it and you can't afford it, I'm not pressuring you. I totally get it. If you can, it's wonderful and it's a way to support me. If not... I'm going to keep doing the free videos. Don't worry. I'm here to help you even if you can't afford to pay for anything. I, I, I want people to have a good relationship. Maggie says, what gates can I expect from a horse if your goal is endurance riding? Okay, good. The saddle rack, the trot, and the fox trot would be my choice for endurance riding. That would be what I would do. And Janet says, yes, it does work for Icelandics too. It absolutely does. Treva, you're very welcome. And uh, I can't wait to come back to Georgia too. Actually, I can't wait to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you're all in the same boat. We all are, but I can't wait to get it out of, out of here and go someplace, preferably Texas, but you know, um, anyway, thanks so much guys. I can't wait to talk to you. Give me more comments in terms of let me know what else you would like, uh, for me to talk about. Oh, I have plenty of ideas, but just keep commenting. Um, we'll probably this week sometime do a video about buddy sour horses. Cause I know that's been popular. And if this time is better, so this was four, 4 PM central standard time, which is 5 PM Eastern time. 
If this worked better, let me know so I can try to make it work for you. Uh, the distance of poles to be 10 to 12 feet apart. Shorter if your horse is shorter. Farther away if your horse is taller. You can just move them around. Just try it. See what works. Uh, you guys are so welcome. Lori, Tony, you're welcome. Linda, yeah, I know, Texas. Uh, Dina, seem to have lost video. It froze up. Comments are still working. Is this your computer? Probably. Try restarting the browser. The video should be available. Uh, Jonah, thanks. Linnea. Oh, yeah. I saw you sent me a PM. I'll take a look at that. Janet, come to Washington. Happy to. I have friends in Washington. Happy to. Um, Sylvia, you're very welcome. And let me know how it goes, guys. Take videos. Post those. Everybody wants to see progress. We're encouraged by that. Uh, Elizabeth, good job. Have fun at the barn. Take it easy. Don't stress. You got this. Good job. Uh, thanks, Regina. Uh, Alexandra says, uh, says, thank you. You're very welcome. And she's from the Netherlands. It's so fun to have people on here from other countries. Uh, you're welcome, Maggie and Candy. And yes, we will talk about Buddy Sour. Okay. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. You got this.